When I was growing up, I never noticed sexism. I know that sounds really hard to believe, but children see differences among people differently than we do. We always tell kids, if you put your mind to it, you can achieve your goals, or you can do whatever, just follow your dreams. And at the time, I believed it wholeheartedly. I was lucky enough to grow up in a good home and go to a good high school. And I had a lot of academic resources. And so when I worked hard, I made good grades. I w when I didn't work as hard, I didn't make as good grades. So it really made sense to me, work hard and get what you want. It wasn't until I got older that I started to notice it. And I don't know how I was so blind to it before. Maybe I just didn't want to believe that people could be so terrible. And for the most part, the people in my life haven't been that terrible. In fact, most of them are pretty great. But when I started to tell people that I intended on studying nuclear engineering when I attended university, I got a lot of mixed responses. A lot of people were very happy for me and supported me a lot. I'm very thankful for those people. But some other people, they kind of looked at me and they were pretty skeptical or they brushed me off. Like it wasn't something that I could do. But at the same time, they were congratulating my male peers for intending on studying an engineering discipline or a science discipline. So what was so different about me? And now I'm in my third year at MIT studying nuclear engineering. And I have this incredible opportunity to study something I'm super passionate about while studying something that I believe will make a positive impact on the world. Now the MIT undergraduate population is around 50-50 men to women, 55-45 actually. And I've received a lot of great support from my classmates at MIT, as well as the faculty and my peers. But it's sometimes it's surprising when I go off and venture away from MIT, go to a, a work conference or a meeting, and I look around the room and I see that I'm the only woman in the room. And, but this happens so often that my female colleagues and I will sometimes count the number of the women in the room to see how many women there are. And often, there's only a, the number of women in the room can only be counted on one hand. At first, this was a bit surprising. But after this has happened so often, the chalk just wears off. But I suppose this shouldn't be surprising, given that only 20% of engineering degrees are awarded to women. And even less than that, 13% of the engineering workforce are women. But what is the reason for this discrepancy? This statistic already shows that women are leaving engineering even after they graduate with an engineering degree. According to MIT sociologist Susan Silby, this may be due to negative work and team dynamics due to everyday sexism. When we encounter or experience or witness sexism, our first response is often to just ignore it act like it didn't happen, or avoid situations like that. And while I agree we shouldn't let sexism phase us, we need to acknowledge that it's making a negative impact on our workplace environment. Engineering can often be described as a boys club. And for a lot of women in engineering, our first instinct is to just try to fit into that boys club, at least wish we were part of that boys club. Just fit in and be one of the boys, just take a joke. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that before. But why do we do this? Maybe it's because we want to feel supported in the workplace. And when we don't fit in, we feel like we're, no one is on our side and we're unsupported. But right now, so many people are on your side. And I'm one of those people on your side. And I'm fighting alongside with you. Because you can offer so much more if you're just yourself. Just because I didn't notice sexism growing up doesn't mean it didn't exist. Sexism could have been happening right in front of my face, and maybe I just didn't realize it. We need to be aware that even if we don't think we're experiencing sexism, or that we aren't experiencing sexism, that other people may be. Walking into a boys club at first can be intimidating, but we can work against this by still reaching for opportunities and also listening to the stories and experiences of our peers so that we may learn from them and make a positive change. And yes, everyone can sit down and listen. 
I hope that one day when I attend a work meeting, a conference, or a technical seminar, that I look around the room and I lose count of the number of women in the room. And I'll forget that my friends and I ever made a game of counting the women. Thank you.